Hello, how are you today? Today I'm going to give a strong warning. Strong warning to the false prophet who speaks like a dragon. If you don't know what I'm talking about, of course you can read Revelation 13, I think starting with 11, verse 11. But please, if you have not watched my three previous videos about the beast system and who this false prophet is, please go back. They are the basics for really this video. Yes, warning to the false prophet. That's all I can say. First, who is this false prophet? Or this beast out of the uh, earth in Revelation 13? Well, that's without any doubt, it's the United States. And yes, the United States speaks like the dragon. Not a dragon, but the dragon. Now, what dragon is John talking about? He mentioned the dragon in uh, Revelation 12. And then again, he mentions the dragon in Revelation 13 at the beginning with the first beast out of the sea. And every time the dragon is not just a dragon, a dragon, but the dragon is symbolic for Satan. And therefore, I am almost certain that in this case, it's really the dragon, not a dragon. It speaks like the dragon, like Satan. In my last video, I talked about that. And of course, what is the dragon? Satan is the father of lies. One lie after another. That's what politicians tell us. One lie after another. And I think I mentioned the Democratic Party that probably has most of the lies. Just heard Camilla Harris speaking at the convention. And what did she do? Another dragon-like statement. And I know I will probably get... Um, people saying, oh, that's not true. But here, hear me. The dragon, the false prophet is like the dragon. And every party of the false prophet has one thing in common. Both. Actually, even the neutral ones like Kennedy. They all have one in common. They all support Israel publicly. Does that come from the dragon? Yes, it is. Because the dragon gives even Israel the power. Indirectly, it gets it from England, who gave them the, the land, uh, the Rothschilds, who gives them money, uh, the United States and all of Europe, who gives them money. Again, Kamala Harris, what did she say? Oh, we will make sure that Israel can defend themselves and have the means to do so. Aha, see, she's step stepping back from Democrats supporting the Palestinians. Oh, no, 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 no. If you want to be a president, you have to support Israel, no doubt. It doesn't matter what party belong, you belong to. I guess that's one point where both of them are in agreement, and they have to be in agreement, or else they will not be picked for president. And yes, I said it correctly, picked. The one who's going to be picked is going to be the candidate not only for the elite, 
what does the elite have to do with Israel, really? Oh, yeah, because Israel is, is, is really ruling the world. No, Israel is not ruling the world. Oh, Israel is ruling, uh, is, is uh, controlling all the media. Mm, okay, you, you see them as maybe important in media, but who is really behind them? I think that is the question. Who's behind them? Of course, who's behind the merchants? I know I have not read in my last video, Revelation 18, how this whore will die. But it says it clearly that the kings are not the only ones bowing down to her, but also the merchants. And so the merchants are just working for Babylon. The great, or if people call him the uh, uh, the man of sin, the man of perdition, or, you know, even Antichrist. Some people call it an, him Elta Antichrist. Make no mistake, it's not the beast. It's the whore. And that's why, because the whore supports the state of Israel, only the state, who doesn't support really the Jews? They care less about the Jews, but they support the state of Israel because the state of Israel is a pawn in the hands of the Vatican, in the hands of uh, uh, the uh, beast out of the sea. They keep power in the Middle East. Well, we say, oh, they're the only democracy. No. They keep power, though. They keep the power in the Middle East. That's the whole thing. That's how these people control the Middle East. That's what their plan was from the beginning. Control the oil. So that's why they all have to support Israel. But people, I'll tell you right now, be careful be careful it's okay you know politicians have to do it in order for them to become president camilla harris has to do it to have even a chance she, she can never dare not to but as christians we have to be careful why Because of this little book right here. Well, it's not the book. I, mean, I suggested this book, The Destruction of Jerusalem, an absolute and irresistible proof of the divine origin of Christianity by George Peter Holford. Hope you you got it yourself or you downloaded it from archive.com. I read this little booklet again. I've been reading it several times and I read it again. And I'm thinking, people need to hear this, especially the Zionist Christians. They have to hear it. Because why did God destroy Jerusalem in 70 AD in such a horrible, or had Israel destroyed in such a horrible, horrible way? You need to learn about the bloodbath that happened in Jerusalem during 70 AD. And people, it wasn't caused really by the Romans. They, they finished it. But it was really caused by their own factions that started rebelling within the city long before Rome took over. Of course, they rebelled against uh, Rome as well. But they brought about the, the disaster. They brought about the disaster. Their own shoes brought about the disaster. Because they constantly warred against the Romans. And people, they knew long before what happens. That they have no chance against the Romans. Of course, they thought Jerusalem was safe. Even Titus thought so. And yet, if it would have not been for God, 
giving the Romans the advantage, they would, ne would have never won. Even Titus said that. And how do we know that? How does this guy right here know all these things? Because of Josephus. So if you want to hear an eyewitness and not this guy that wrote this little book, 1808, I think 1805, if you don't believe that, then you need to read Josephus, The Wars of the Jews, book five, volume five. I witness to the disaster that came upon Jerusalem because they caused it themselves. People tried to prevent it. Titus tried very hard to save at least the, uh, the temple, and he couldn't. Because divine intervention, people. And guess what? Not one of the uh, Christians were hurt. They all left because they saw the signs. Why? Because they could read Matthew 24. They could read uh, Luke 21 and, and, and Mark 13 and understand what Jesus said. They all were there, of course, right? So they didn't have the misinterpretation of dispensationalism. Neither did Halford. Halford wrote his book before dispensationalism. And that's why most of it he got right. There's some little things that I don't think he got right. But he accurately... Um, uh, some made a summary of the observation of Josephus. I mean, that I can tell you for sure. And why is it so important to know what happened? Well, people always say this quote in Matthew 24. So they always quote Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be a great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. That quote comes from Daniel 12. And people say, well, this is going to be applied to the end. Way to the end. During the Antichrist, of course, right? Well, that's not true. When you read this book, And you compare it, what happened in Jerusalem during 70 AD, and what will happen during the uh, wrath of God and the Armageddon War in Zechariah 14. No. Zechariah 14 is going to be mild compared to what happened during 70 AD and the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. It is true. This does not apply to the end. For then there will be great distress unequal from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equal again. People, God, God's wrath came upon the Jews because they rejected Messiah. Not only did they reject Messiah, but when others came, okay, when others came, in his name, telling, oh, we are the Messiah, they followed them. They followed those false ones, but the real one they rejected. And people, they brought it upon themselves because they, of their disbelief. Disbelief. And what are they still doing? They're going back to the land again, even though they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it because God says you have to follow his plan. You have to accept his Messiah before you can go back. People always tell me, oh, he will bring them back from the four corners and blah, blah, blah. 
in the Old Testament, it is written, "Yes, He will bring them back," and that is He Messiah. But He will not bring any of them back that are not believing in Messiah. And what happened to the people this past two thousand years, or even the people that are living in Jerusalem today? If they're not believing in Messiah, they're going to be destroyed. Going to be destroyed again. It doesn't do any good to say, "Oh yeah, God brings them back to to Israel," but they don't believe. Because we should know what happened the first time. Read this book or read Josephus. It was horrible. It was a bloodbath. The Romans were not. Titus, their general, couldn't even stop them. Because they were in such rage, and they just killed everybody. Very few people survived. They only left the very poor, and you know this is this wasn't the first time, right? I mean, wars of the Jews—they warred before, and they just killed the Jews before the Roman army. In various places, and he is also mentioning that, of course, Josephus shows Cephas as well because he describes the wars of the Jews. It's not the first war they're having. You know, Romans didn't just, you know, attack for no reason whatsoever. There was a reason. Because God allowed it. Because God, it was the wrath of God. It was, you know what? Some people say, "Oh, Jacob's trouble comes at the end." I believe that was Jacob, Jacob's trouble. That was Jacob's trouble. Some people don't believe that. I don't find very many、uh, verses, even in the Old Testament, about Jacob's trouble. Anyways, this is like this phrase again that people just throw around, like,、uh, like it's whatever. Uh, but I have done a study, and after doing a biblical study,、uh, it, it really looks like that was Jacob's trouble. That was the time, and there was great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never be again equal again. Yeah, that was great distress. My cat just has to do her little up and down little thing. But why am I saying that again? Because it's not only a warning to the Jews, but it's a warning to all people that support the state of Israel. People, why am I saying that? Who is going to be? Destroyed during the Armageddon, or Armageddon War. It's everybody, including Israel. Again, read Zechariah fourteen. Israel is being looted, destroyed. Women are being raped. People are being taken captive again. But it's not going to be as bad as it was the last time. It's not going to be like a bloodbath. And again, what else did the Romans do afterwards? They totally, totally destroyed everything. There was really not one stone on top of the other. I mean, two. I mean, they even dug up or ground up the foundations. Of all of Jerusalem, it will not be during the Armageddon War that bad. Of course, there's going to be a, a、um, an earthquake. But again, I'm warning. I'm warning those people. The、uh, Government of Israel does not even believe, so they don't care. 
they do this because they have to do it again, just like the presidents or those president candidates that want to become a president. They have to say, we are supporting Israel no matter what. Politicians have to do it because who do they follow? The dragon people. And it's dragon talk. We're supporting Israel. It's dragon talk. I know people are going to get upset, or at least some of them, but it is dragon talk. You can't support a people that are against the plan of God, against the Messiah. If you miss against the Messiah, if you're against the Son, you're against the Father. Again, read First John, all of it. Who is against the Son is against the Father. They're not only against the Son, Messiah, but they're against the Father still. And because they're still against him, God is not finished with the wrath upon them. I'll tell you that right now. God is not finished. This is a warning. This book is a warning. What will happen when you go against God? What will happen to the Jews? Now, of course, God always uses other people. Right? So think about it. During the Holocaust, was it really God's um, plan? What happened to the Jews? Once again, you know, it wasn't the first time. The Jews have been uh, um, persecuted ever since they were kicked out of um, Judah in 70 AD. They were persecuted by the Roman Catholic Church. They were even supposed to convert, which a lot of them did, or they were killed in the Inquisition. So yeah, it's not like, oh my goodness, all these other people are against the Jews. No. Is it because they're still rejecting God and he's trying to get them to see the Messiah? Don't know. I mean, I know what happened during 70 AD. And you know what? Jesus prophesied it. You don't just have to go by Matthew 24. There's other uh, uh, spots in Matthew. And I think, let me, let me check it out. So um, um, Matthew 23 can be read, the whole thing. I'm going to read 37. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks and under the wings, and you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay. This is just one of them. In other places, when they condemned him, they even said, your blood will be on us and our children. They said that to Pilate. Your blood will be on us and our children. So I found it in Matthew 27, and I'm going to start with 24 when Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere but instead an uproar was starting he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd I'm innocent of this man's blood he said it's your responsibility and all the people answered his blood is on us and our children and then of course Barnabas was released. Think what that means. They took upon themselves 
his blood. I don't know how somebody can even grasp such a horrible thing, such a horrible thing, because what really happened in 70 AD is the blood came upon them. They were killed by the Romans because of what they have done to Jesus. It's a warning, people. It's a warning for people to support the government of Israel. I'm not talking about the Jews that go about their own business and have their own religion. That's what they're choosing. But when you're using God or saying, you know, God's business, oh, this is, you know, the, the promised land to the Jews or whatever. The land is promised to Messiah. It's the land of the Messiah. And if you're not even believing in Messiah, what do you have uh, in his land? You have no business in his land. This is what they're, you know, doing wrong. It's what they get wrong. The land belongs to Messiah and his bride. And the bride are not the Jews. Or not the Jews as a nation. They are Jews that accept that Messiah. And of course, someday it will belong to them. Said that very clearly. But I hope people will get the warning. I think maybe when you read this book, it should maybe be a stronger warning than anything. They will all be destroyed, including the beast out of the earth, the beast out of the sea, which is the uh, the earth is the beast out of the earth is the false prophet. That's what it says in Revelation 16. The beast out of the sea. The kings of the east, not north. So say anything about the kings of the north. Has nothing to do with Gog and Magog. Please, please, please. They're all going to be killed, including Israel, because Israel belongs to the beast system. Both of the beasts. They could not exist. Could not exist without the beast. And if it can't exist without the beast, it is supported by the dragon. It's supported by the dragon. I'm coming to an end. People, let the Holy Spirit guide you always. It's getting serious. It's getting really, really serious. And we're coming closer and closer to the Feast of Trumpets. And I will be making, my next video will be about Jesus returning soon. Yeah, he can, he can return this year because look how terrible it is. Will we make it another year? Will we see the new uh, uh, tyrannical government? Because that's what we're saying, uh, seeing. I did a German video about this subject, and uh, my title was uh, "World, New World Order or Old World Order? And people, of course, it's going to be the Old World Order, but what they did, oh, it's a, a, a conspiracy theory, right? And it's a conspiracy theory that somebody uh, 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 is taking over the government, okay? Controlled government. They already know. They already know what's coming. But it's a conspiracy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a conspiracy theory. Well, it is a conspiracy, but a theory. It's a theory. That's because nobody has proved it. But, hey, it's not too hard to prove. Anyways, 
People let the Holy Spirit guide you. We're going back to the old, of course. Watch my last three videos. See you then.